All right. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Metaverse podcast. I'm Mark Fernandez, and I'm here with the one and only Tomo Fujita, music uh, um, genius professor <laughs> at Berkeley School of Music, uh, correct? Right? I, I, yes. Yeah. Berkeley College of Music. Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music. It, yes. How, how long have you been at the Berkeley College of Music? Well, I was a student for, you know, three, four years first, then since 1993, for almost 29 years now. Yeah, so, 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 so you went straight from being a student to being a professor? Not a really. Uh, I graduated around 1991, around there. Then a couple of years, I taught, you know, Berkeley summer guitar session, and then Berkeley guitar department, they asked me to join as a faculty. Yeah. So and two, but that's pretty good. Usually, I was told Berkeley, they don't hire any, you know, recent graduate, you know what I mean? So I was Unless they're Tomo Fujita. <laughs> yeah. They, they nice. And, uh, nice. and uh, you, um, you're, you're born in Japan? Um, yes. Yes. And, and when did you come over to the United States? Um. You know, exactly November 86. Oh, wow. That's a great year. Yeah. Then 87 January, I enrolled as a student. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So you came um, You came for college. So you finished your high school in Japan. Yeah. Then, yeah then just a little funny story is, uh, it, it, you know, normally people graduate high school and then plan to go to music school, whatever we go. But then uh, typical... Japanese culture things that parents, relatives, everybody say music is not a great thing to pursue. So I <laughs> tried to please my parents. So I went to regular college instead first. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, and then you shifted over into, yes. into this, Berkeley. This was kind of a secretly plan B that, <laughs> you know, I was kind of practicing jazz guitar, preparing a little bit. Then I found somebody who just got scholarship, full scholarship. So I shake his idea, so I gain all the ideas that I did. I did exactly what he did, so I got yeah. a full scholarship after that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! And, and when did you when did you first pick up the guitar? About the twelve, actually twelve. But I always said I start from thirteen, just because the first exact one year I could not play anything but one, you know, chromatic scale. Right. Yeah. And the and like when you say chromatic scale, you just mean going from E down to E, like bomb, bomb, oh, bomb. Like yeah, like almost like a half step scale, but just you know, you know, like physically, I was just playing, you know, side by side. Right. So almost, right. no musical at all, just very technical. Yeah. So entire year, that's all I did. Right, which is also one of your uh, exercises, you know. That's I, right. Uh, because because some people you know pick up a guitar learn song and song by song but then without those foundation like a chromatic scale it takes a long time to get you know not having a nice technique so that's why sometime i teach very much technique first yeah you know? yeah yeah when, when people uh, learn guitar because i've been playing guitar uh very badly for like 20 plus oh, yeah. years <laughs> but and and, and and it's really funny, and like this is a very special moment for me that not a lot of people would understand. But okay. my guitar teacher yes. and my and my bandmate and one of my yes. closest friends of all time is actually one of your students. Oh wow! Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're kind of like my guitar grandfather, you know, yeah. uh, because he's kind of like you know my father right. teaching me, yeah. and you kind of taught him. Um, yeah. Yes. And. and for, for a very long time, all I did was, you know, I got some Beatles books, you know, like like the complete Beatles. Yes. And you learn and you learn Beatles songs. Right. And, and you learn chords that way. But that's yes. it. it, it right. You're kind of plateau, you know. Yeah. The, the reason is those Beatles book or any, you know, Rolling Stones or any any type of like, you know, music a book always showing a tablature top of music. And those tablature not not all correct. Right. It's you know almost correctly enough to follow the song, but that's how they sell books. Without the right. tab, people cannot sell the books. So, you know, then so so the you know it's the real part is you learn chords pretty quickly, 
but you don't have you have no idea why this is good or bad you know then you learn yeah so basically yeah. visually you understand the chord progression but musically by listening very difficult to hear sometimes yeah yeah you yeah. know for me for a very long time i would play guitar and i would only be able to compose new music by taking chords from another progression and then changing the tempo a little bit or right. changing you know the bars or the accents yes but but it wasn't until this last pandemic after okay. almost 18 years of playing uh -huh. that i told dan is his name your former student yes um I told him, I want to learn more about guitar, right? Yes. And um, he, you know, started to tell me stuff that you, you know, taught him. And that's how I discovered your ah, channel. You know? uh, that's really nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And your channel is, is very um, intimidating at times because you're such oh, yeah. an advanced guitar player yeah. that, that, that you need to, like, you need to come pre like prepared for class, you know, when you go to your channel, you <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, now, nowadays, actually, I change a little bit pace because you see, like, you know, I, I, I also a little bit confused, like choosing right material for my channel, like the Tomohujita music, because I thought everybody want to play like me, so a little bit more <laughs> funky, little jazzy. So, right. you know, I demonstrate uh, something that what I like to do. But then most people say that's really too hard to do. Right. But then it, if I do, you know, easy one, I'm not sure because a lot of teacher teaches on YouTube easy stuff. So right, I right. don't have to do easy one. But then then uh, past two weeks, if you watch it, I could try as a you know course. I I took really slow, mm. almost as if I have students that really slow, which is yeah. good, and I can fit that. So yeah, yeah. I only teach only top three strings, only one topic, half an hour. Yes, yes. And no, I have uh, like that. You know, yeah. I actually saw that, and uh, you know, look, triads is such a, it's such a beautiful thing, and, and, and like the the way that I look at it now yes. is that you have your chords, right? Yes. And that's kind of like the amateur way of learning. You learn some chords, but no, but no, then, no, that's all good. Yeah. You know, but but then it's like, how do you learn um, the notes on the guitar? And then right. I and then I came across what you know you talk about, Dan talks about, a lot of other people talk about, is the caged system, right, um, right. That that really kind of connected the whole thing for me. Yeah. And then and then it lets you kind of really use the theory as yes. a language of expression yeah. yes you know? thank you yeah so what happened is cage system it has been like you know um many many years everybody used that but just because what happened is when you show an uh, open course of a guitar c a you know all spell caged but mm -hmm. then it's a little too easy to show people because you you can talk a whole thing in five minutes, okay? Right. Without the theory, we are talking about theory means like a root or major third or fifth order degree. Mm -hmm. That's really important to understand fretboard, you know, on the guitar. So that's why I never talk about cage system on my lesson because mm -hmm. easy to show. But you fall into shapes, right? Right. That's right. why I talk about uh, triads. The kind of same thing, in, 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 you know. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like triads, um, it's such a like, you know, like the way that I think about it is, you know, um, when you have dissonance in music, the yes. triad has the least resistance. You know, those right. three notes are like. Right sound the cleanest and then when you go to the pentatonic scale it yeah. gets just a little bit more dissonant but it still right, sounds right, very right. clean yeah and, then, and then when you go to the full diatonic scale yeah it, it, you know you can hit a couple notes and you're like ah that's yeah, yeah you see that's like you know non non diatonic chords or sometime outside of a chords which is good to use those notes play around but if you stay too long like for example major scale do re mi fa the fourth note and it's good fa mi re do many many 
you know, uh, uh, <coughs> music has that do re mi fa fa mi re do. But if you go do fa, if you stay a long time with the major chords, it's a dissonant sound. Right, right, yeah, right. because of that distance. So it's it's really interesting. It, it, you know, it's not like absolutely you cannot use that sound, but you have to use, you know, a little different way. Yeah. So you got you yeah you understand so much of music. That's great. Let me ask you a question. Do you think? <clears throat> and me and my yeah. friends talk about this all the time. But yeah, do, do you think music is an invention or a discovery? Well, almost like <sighs> I I really think discovery. Then mm -hmm. somebody made up how to say things or how to categorize. Then that becomes theory. Mm. That's why if you learn theory first before the music, never work because oh, theory never existed before the music. Oh, that's really interesting. I, I wasn't expecting I think you to so. say that. It's almost like, you know, to me, it's kind of funny way. I'm not really, you know, heavily religious person, but I really think music has God gave us get music. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't otherwise disagree we go with insane. Yeah. Because you know, so much work to do every day, so much things we have to do, correct things. And music gives you so much pleasure, so mm. much freedom, so much release, you know. So intense, you know, some people express a lot of different emotion. And so to me, like, thanks God, I got music, and I got guitar. It's just yeah. healthy. This one, um, you know, yeah. Thank God for us all that you have music and you have a guitar. You make some beautiful. I really beautiful think music. so. Yeah. Also, yes. But uh, but uh, I I want to really, I I I want people to really understand. Sometimes you know people think about me. Oh, he's amazing. Or oh, he's great because he went to Berkeley. Oh, he's a Berkeley teacher. But you have to understand. First year at the Ber you know, playing guitar, I could not play anything. <laughs> So that means like, you know, see, important part is one year exactly. I I could not play any song, but I I I really kept doing it. Yeah, and, and you know, one thing that I've noticed as I've gotten better at playing guitar that now I know all my notes on the fretboard. I know my now all you my have major a great scale. Teacher. That's great. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know my major scales, now I yeah. know my pentatonic scales, I know most of my triads. On the Great. first three strings, yes, uh, and it gives me a lot of freedom to express myself. But right, just because now you are connecting notes mm. with a reasonable amount, like so. Right. This is the problem. Okay, yeah. you yeah. learn. You have to memorize. Learn, you know all the fretboards. See, already too much to do. Right. <laughs> and this this is called fretboard. There's no black key or white key. It's there's no way you can learn this, you know, without right. any reason. That's why I use one finger, one string. This way, you can go wrong. Right, one string, right. one. So that's my approach. See, five fingers, six strings. That's the problem. <laughs> right, right, right. And Took then me you a long know, time to understand that, you know, 22, <laughs> 22 frets. Um, it's like 21, 22 frets. That's already confusing. Too many. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, one thing that I've noticed as I've learned more about the guitar, and, yes. and even Dan, who's a master, I consider him a master guitar player. I'm um, happy to hear that, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, um, I'll tell you his name afterwards because I think you'll okay, remember okay. Sure, him. Sure. Yeah, but you know, I don't want to say his name because you know he's a very private right, right, guy. Right, right, Okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah. But, but um, he um, and we talk about this that sometimes, you, like when you're learning how to play guitar, you mm. hit these plateaus. Of course, you know? of course. You, you know, yeah. and then, and then it, it's impossible to get out of. It. it feels impossible to get out of it. That's um, right. What What's your advice for players that hit that plateau? Okay. Even me, I hit that. I hit that. You know, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I just hit really hard, just because, <laughs> because three weeks nonstop working, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So everything becomes sort of pressure. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So even music making video, everything become pressure because I did too much. Every single day, almost eight a.m. to ten p.m., I was working, nonstop, wow. because it was fun. So I was kept doing it. 
sure. but I completely forgot about I have to rest. I, I'm right. a human. I'm not, you know. So when that hit, right away, I felt like, oh, maybe I should practice. Wait a minute, wait a minute. See, that's people do. You mm. push more. doesn't work. Down, mm. Because if you do, you, you torture yourself. What happened is you did so much work, really great. But what happened is you did this kind of same thing over and over. And you basically, it's a little bit, you know, your brain got tired. Sure. So you have to have a rest. So first thing you have to do is just don't worry. Right. Put the guitar down. That, right, exactly. Put the guitar down because guitar is not important. Something else is important. Your health is important. Your family is important. Yourself is important. That case, first put down the guitar. Don't worry. Don't compare anybody on the internet because that's too much information again. Mm. The here's you who if you can get out from that plateau, try to help other people. Mm. Because if you do, you forget about yourself. You see? Right, right, right. That's First best of all, that's, way. that's mm. very good advice. That's very good advice. That's you, that's a number one. But also sometimes forget about practicing and try to find a really good song. Songs that you did you didn't play before. And that's what I did. I so I I I look up a little bit Japanese pop song, mm. and then I pick one song, and then when I was at the Berkeley, that was a Tuesday morning. I have to tell you that Tuesday morning, my head was almost like, you know, exploded because I was worked so much. I could not take it anymore, so I just learned song just like a kid. Right. I learned song, you know, ten minutes. I practice. I play with my smile. That's what I did. Right, right. And, and then going back to another point that you made, you use the music to release that tension yes. as well. Then I did, exactly I did that because I learned the song, I play it, I just play happy sound, and then I play that to my audience. Mm. So I made a video right away and I post it. And I could tell my, my facial expression is smiling because music is making my smile naturally. Right. And then right. that gives other people inspiration, happiness. See, that's why this is not really made up thing. It's a discovery, really. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, uh, we we often talk about that if that that if we discover uh, music in an alien culture, that most likely it will be very similar. You yeah. know that 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 no matter what, it's still going to be kind of mathematically with the similar degrees and the similar probably yeah chords, chord similar, sounds. Right. different yeah. sounds maybe but similar right i believe that yeah you know um i don't know all the details but um johannes kepler was able to understand the way that planets orbit around the sun and, and their mm. elliptical shapes through the frequencies of of music essentially oh, you know you know no. that you know he he he, uh, he called it the uh, the symphony of the stars um yeah that, i see yeah yeah it's very, i don't it's know very... the detail but it it is makes sense because you see seven days a week 24 hours a day, you know it like that seven right. different key you know 12 notes they're, they're right. kind of similar like a number system right yeah um, the, the, the other thing I wanted to chat with you a little bit about is, um, yes. I, I obviously, you know, love guitars and, you know, you can't see my background, but I have a lot of guitars too. Not like that, you know, like not that many, but I have a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's your, what's your kind of like guitar that maybe not the one that you play the most, but the one that you have like the, like the most personal relationship with. Out of personal like relationship, a, yeah, yeah, like, like, like the one guitar that, like, it's the closest thing to a pet that, like, any uh, man can, yeah. can have with a piece of wood. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely, like, you know, my, my offender, Stevie Ray Vonstra, because, um, you know, number one, that this is Shra, because when my first son was born, that's when you know, I thought. 
I, I should play Fender because I had a different kind of guitar, the yellow one, the Seymour Duncan. That's yeah. the one actually changed my life because that's the one made me play uh, a lot of new music. And then, you know, that guitar made me to go to Berkeley. So I thank right. for that guitar. But then this, like when I came to America, really official you know, Fender guitars that I, you know, bought, like used, you know, because I didn't have enough money, but just all, all, all like new and used. This is my wife's picture. My kids' oh, that's picture beautiful. here. Yeah. Oh, that's see? beautiful. You see, already my family is together because when <laughs> when, I, right. when I tour, I used to tour with this one. I have to see my kids right before oh, that's my, my song. You know what I mean? So, and uh, when I when I show this to John Mayer, John Mayer said he has he has same guitar and he does same thing. He has a oh, picture, wow. you know, family and stuff. Yeah. So so this one, everything was see. Look there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You're, see, it's not the relic; it's really natural, you know. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. And and, and um, you you mentioned that your first guitar was the Seymour Duncan, but isn't it Seymour Duncan makes uh, the pickups? So yeah, they also yeah. Used so, to so make like, guitars. Yeah. So that that guitar, it's a little bit of, um, okay. So Japanese, you know, musical instrument company just borrow Seymour Duncan guitar mm. name. Okay, so that's why they built Seymour Duncan. So they <laughs> Duncan Seymourize, you know, like that. So oh, it's I not see. really Seymour Duncan, but they just use that name because Seymour Duncan was famous, you know, back then already. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. So they so they licensed the name. Yeah. So because you know it makes sense because that was eighty two. See, like you know, late seventies uh, around eight, around up to eighty two. Fender wasn't doing great. Fender was going really bad, you know, sorry mm. to say, but, you know, so a lot of the Japanese company was making, like, you know, similar to Gibson and Fender. Mm. So 82, the peak, Japanese company making Fender-style guitar. But if you put the Japanese name, not really, you know, um, attractive, you know, so that's why they want to use English-American name. So that's why I think it, they use a, Seymour Duncan, right? Know, That's why kind of crazy, but yeah, yeah. Do you still have it? Do you still oh, have course, that guitar? Of course, yeah, I have one. You know, next room, but yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. And, and, and do you still buy guitar? Because I know, like you know, on your video when John Mayer just did his newest album, he gifted you a very yeah that was, guitar. yeah. So 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 that okay. Let me let me you know give you a little clear about the, what's going on. Yeah, I love guitar. I love guitars, and I, I, you know, um, years ago I started collecting vintage guitar we call Duosonic or Music Master. Yeah, the, yeah, I've heard the, of that. Yeah, the reason is those Duosonic twenty-two inch and a half, you know, short size guitar. It's not really, really popular for American audience because the size is small. Mm. But if it's ninety, you know, nineteen sixty-three. It's you know it's quality is same as other vintage guitar like a Stratocaster and Telecaster. The mm -hmm. difference is if you buy 1963 Stratocaster now it's a thirty thousand dollars, but sure. Geosonic is about three thousand dollars. You see, it's right, affordable. Right. That's why maybe 15, 20 years ago I started buying these guitar because back then much more cheaper, affordable. Right, right. And they ended up I collect so many because I'm always want to learn history. Mm. But you know, Fender vintage history hard to learn because too expensive to buy so many guitars. Okay. <laughs> right, uh, right. But this one, like I said, everything's really 10, 10 times cheaper than regular Telecaster or Strat. Yeah. It's almost like you buy one Strat or Telecaster, you can buy 10 of them, you know. So that's why I ended up I collect so many. Diosonic Music Master. Yeah, I no, study them. Uh, do, yeah. do you do you have one? Can I see what one looks like? I'm not even sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh, let's see. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So this one, what we call Diosonic. Oh, okay. It's very pretty. Yeah. yeah, pretty. Yeah. So this is like you know uh, refinished, but I have. Oh, oh, so it's a Fender Duosonic. It's like a. It's like a yeah, type of you know, duo, two pickups, okay? Oh, I and then, see. And I the see. music master is only one pickup, one pickup. I don't have it here in the room, this room, but yeah. Oh, so, I see, I see. So that, but body shape and neck shape is the same. 
but uh, see, the Dual Sonic has two dual pickup, you know, front and middle. And if you go center, become humbucking. No, no, which is very creative. But wow, but for example, this knobs, this you know, volume pot, this is the same as Telecaster or P, uh, Precision Bass. Oh, they I share see. that. Yeah, and the quality is really, really. See, if you say you know, students' guitar or you know, kids' guitar nowadays always pay you know, cheap stuff, but back then. Exactly, really handmade already. Really, this right. is 1956. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. exactly, amazing. So I was really obsessed with these guitars because so 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 much great tone and affordable, so I can learn. So basically, one point I had from 1956 to 64 each year. Wow. <laughs> yeah, each duo sonic from each year by Fender. Yeah, duo sonic and music master each year. Yeah, but then they, but then I sold most of them. Mm. I only kept example that I thought really good. Just because yeah. having every year it's just too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because 56, 57 not huge difference sometimes. 63, right, right. 64 kind of similar. But if you go 61 to 63, it's different spec. Yeah, yeah. No, the, so the uh, right. The so yeah, and after that, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, so like it's um it's a little embarrassing to having too many things because eventually what I want to do is I don't want to have too many things. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> right, that's right. My, my life goal. I mean, right. right now, my business is teaching, understanding every instrument, show people what it is. So that's why I have a lot of example for teaching purpose. Sure, sure. But eventually, I want to have less stuff. Right, right. Because you have guitars that I'm sure that are absolutely gorgeous that you don't play for 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 years, right? Or many, many, many months? Yeah, see, that's the problem. Yeah. So, so right now, so I have a system. I have so like you know, Mark, this room, right? This gear room, almost, almost like this. This room is more like a, you know, uh, music store. Okay. Have a, <laughs> one, you know. But then, then each one has labels, right? And then sometimes I pick six guitars, playing up. I play two weeks. I put back. I put the other six to play. So you see. Oh, like, interesting. I I have a rotation system, but like exactly what you said. If I don't play one year like that. Uh, now I'm start selling these, right, right. Because you just don't need too much, because I that's know. become destruction. You know. I have the uh, the the very first uh, expensive guitar I ever bought. Um, I bought it in nineteen like ninety nine or something. It was okay. with my one of my first paychecks, that's and it a, was um, nice. It was a Rickenbacker. Three, I think it's called the 335 Rickenbacker. 330, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like semi hollow body, beautiful yeah. guitar, but I barely ever play it, you know, because it's since oh. then I've bought like, you know, uh, Fenders and, you know, Telecaster yeah. and like, yeah. you know, Les Paul and yeah. like, you know, oh, Schachter. Yeah, if you have like, you know, Telecaster, Les Paul, Stratocaster, that's great. And, you know, Rickenbacker or anything like, you know, uh, you know, Epiphone like that, little, little, little bit different one. If you really like that tone once in a while, then, then, you know, you want to have it. But yeah, yeah. I right. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that um, I want to give yes. you a, some major props on because yes. I, I watching your videos and I recommend everybody go check out your videos. Tomo well, thank you so much. Yeah. Tomo Fujita music. It's incredible. Um, you know, so much content there. If you want to learn how to really play guitar very, <laughs> very seriously, that's the number one spot, you know, Thank on you. the internet. Um, is I I wanted to have a really nice acoustic guitar. Yes. And acoustic guitars are very expensive, you know. Yeah. And, right. And, Not true. And, and I saw that you talked about this brand called Orangewood. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. The and, reason, yeah. See, okay. So here's a funny when I found Orangewood, right, I thought a little cheaper because it under thousand dollars. And just you know, I was typical like you know um, way to think. Okay, under thousand, probably okay. Right. You know, then I start noticing more and more, and you know, 
and they contact me, says, would you like to try one? And I honestly, I wrote to the you know owner of this company, I will play, I will tell you what I feel, but if I don't like, I return it. Is sure. that okay? Because yeah. I don't want to have anything sitting. Do you understand? Yeah, if I yeah, play, yeah. if I don't like, I just send back, okay? And then he sent me one, and I was playing. Well, is this really $1,000 guitar? Wow. Because really <laughs> easy to play. Yeah, it's and it's really all solid wood and like... Yeah, I bought two of them because of you. So they oh, made a sale you. because yeah. of you. And then, and then makes sense because the owner is a Korean guy. Oh, I'm okay. a Japanese guy, Asian people, you know. And then his parents has a little bit more history in the musical industry. Interesting. And then his parents understand which factory in Korea, Indonesia, or China is good. To, see, get the, to get it, the wood, to source the right. wood. Right. Even like, you know, made in China or in Korea, chi even made in China, for example, you have to choose right people to ask to build. Do you understand? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They understand. So they, they use really good people. I mean, not, I'm not saying bad people, you know, you know, more picky, you know, about, the, you know. Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Look, it's all yeah. about understanding the, yeah, um, exactly. you know, like like the outsourcing pipeline. Exactly. So so resources are really good because, you know, right people work with right people, right source, right? And then bring everything back to California. Mm. Then check again everything. Right, because like their model, it's a, it's actually quite interesting. And to be honest with you, yes. After I learned more about their model, I tried to do it myself a yeah. little bit by trying to outsource guitar parts to China. Yeah. I built a uh, one custom guitar that's kind of similar to um to the um uh, the uh, Languedoc, you know, um kind of uh, the Languedoc guitar. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, anyway, it's like a okay. very customized, weird guitar. Okay. But anyway, the yeah. point is, is that they 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 have great outsourcing in China. Uh, and they they bring the guitars over, and then they yeah. set them up in the U.S. Yeah. and they right. design them, yeah. and customize yeah. them, and they're able to give you Martin level quality. I know. Yeah. At like you know yeah. a fifth of the price. Yes. You know. Yeah. So so like you know, and then <laughs> and Marco last year. You know, I was playing Orange Wood, but then it just, you know, like a typical, um, like, you know, uh, professional musician kind of decision came up. Okay, if I want to make an album, use Orange Wood. I'm not sure it's really a great idea, you know, because right, right. there's Martin, there's, you know, um, so I bought Martin, I bought um, uh, uh, Collins. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. I spent like each one like a five thousand dollars more. Okay? <laughs> right, right. So, but then problem is, they you know especially like the Collins, they glued their you know a uh, bridge bridge part you know in, in, into the you know guitar body. So that means you have to bring it to um, repair person to take it out. Uh, you know, you, you know to change the height. Right, right, right. Because the action wasn't what you liked. Because like, yeah, so yeah. so like you know, but orange wood, easy to change, but also actually is much lower. Right, really adjusted really nicely. Right, and I really like playability and tone overall. You know, so I really like orange wood. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. No, no, it's a great, it's a great guitar. That's what I, I'm, that's what I use here right now. I have a. Oh, great. beautiful, yeah. a, a beautiful little dreadnought sitting right there. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, um, I love it. Let, let, when, um, in terms of like, like setting your guitar up, yeah, I actually haven't. You know, now that I think about it, I haven't really seen a video. A, first of all, it's very hard to find a good video on this topic. In any case, I'll just throw that out there as like, yeah. So I, I would just you know, the, the, I mean, Mark, please watch my um, long fifty. You know, five zero fifty fifty minutes video about changing strings, how to you know uh, dress mm. frets a little bit by hand. So that that I thought, okay, when I made that video, I thought that's too long to explain how to change the strings or how to clean guitar right. without any chemicals. But okay. then turns out a lot of people loved it. 
because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't cut anything. See, usually people think, oh, you know, your video is too long because you don't edit anything. But that was I didn't edit because I can't edit. So <laughs> I, I, I didn't hide anything. Right, right. Every process I showed them, you yeah, know, yeah. how I change, how to cut the string. So a lot of people really liked it. And then, then what about? Said, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. Somebody said the reason I like you this video because you didn't cut anything. Right. Right. Oh my God, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Look. Yeah. Look, as an avid fan of your channel, I got to let you know it doesn't matter yeah. if you cut or you don't cut. Like, yeah. The amount of knowledge that you're giving us for free um, is in, is very generous. You know. So cutting, no cutting. You know. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't right. really matter. But yeah. The, the 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 problem that I'm having is yeah. setting up your intonation, and oh, I think yeah, you know, it, 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 and like setting up like you know, bending the the neck of the guitar. It, it's so yeah. hard. It's so hard to really understand how to yeah, do that. I I, sh I should make a video for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. because that's why actually that's why I bought a used guitar like a s Squire. Uh huh. Because. I bought a used Squire, really beat up one. Neck is kind of bow like this, you know, you know, bridge is really off. Then that's how I practice fix it. Mm. Because those are cheap guitar. So if I broke it, it's fi fine. So I just, right. you know, freely to, you know, do that. So what happened was, you know, when I bought, it was strings, you know, missing, you know, not, you know, sending, you know, saddle is really low. Pickup height is really irregular, and then like you know, uh, jack is really almost falling off. Right. The first thing. So this is Ibanez, but first thing, the guitar, you know, if I buy this, you know, uh, jack, I tighten a little bit, make mm. sure, and then you have to do you know string height, but before you know, uh, pickup height, and then string height, but then same time. Fretboard is really dirty, so sometimes I have to use, you know, like a lemon oil or a fretboard conditioner. Yeah. Just for, just first time because so dry. Then you know use that's that's what I did. That lesson, you know, to clean up a little bit, and then put the string on. Then string height. Then neck is sometimes bow a little bit. So in that case, it's very easy. You have to use this wrench. Yeah. Yeah. Then only you only you turn like this just a little bit, just a little tiny yeah, bit, just a little bit. Then you pull the neck a little bit so that the neck moves. But how do you know when it's in the right height? Because that oh that's right height oh yeah, well that's like you know it, it takes a little time. But what happens is I, I I bend the notes. That's my style. Mm. So if I bend the notes everywhere, it's so clear. So like almost like a two, uh, you know, Mark, this is an easy way to do. I, I use this, you know, heavy gauge pick, this one yep. millimeter. Yeah. So if I have a two, two picks, like, you know, any guitar, 12 frets, you put the two picks here, you know. At the 12th fret. Yeah. And just fits right. You know, it's, it's see, in other words, Another was not too hard to put the pick, but also if you shake, pick is moves a little bit. You see? Pick right, right. You see me? Right. See? So and in other words. And that's the picks on top of each other? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So that that's like a height I like. You know, 1.5 or two millimeter and a 12 fret. And so this that's... is easy. Just put the two picks and it's just right on, you know. And it's only the 12th fret, you don't put it up in the higher frets? No, just because once you have a 12 frets on two, then everything is just fine. Yeah. Right, right. Again, right. because, yeah, because it's... I just do a very, very simple way to do it. Yeah. Right, because it's the math, right? You right. know, it's like, you know, yeah, the... pretty much. So that way, you know, every note you won't buzz. But then, then uh, this is a little pain, not painful, but then you use tuner, you play open strings, and you play 12 frets. And then 12 frets, if it's sharp, then this nut has to go this way, more make it wider. Ooh, okay, hold on. Say that one more time. Say oh, that one sure. more time because that, that's the magic right there. Yeah, so you play E string. Yeah. The 12, so first, right, you tune up E string with a tuner. Correct. Then you play here. Then, then if 
you know, t you know, tuning go sharp means from 12 frets to this knot, it's too short. Ooh, so this I knot see. has to go this way. That's why oh. actually really funny. See, already drawer, I have a this, you know. Right, right. And then you just screw it. Yeah. So in other words, like, you know, Berkeley, <laughs> funny, Berkeley, uh, mm -hmm. my office. Yeah. My drawer has all, you know, those <laughs> things because i'm i mean sometimes i cannot believe students pay so much money for tuition but the guitar is a horrible you know, <laughs> right, right, so right. i have to have this all the time i have new strings everything ready to go you know fix yeah it. yeah i, I um, mean, a lot of people surprised how much i changed their guitar sounds oh, so good oh it's so much it's such a fun part of the guitar that yeah. i've been learning um uh, i yeah. got i got a 335 um uh, Gibson <laughs> hollow body, uh, just agree. just the body, oh. and and I um I I completely wired it up, you know, you just did? watching, wow. yeah, yeah, watching videos and oh wow, and like with those guitars with the open F hole, it's very tricky actually to like connect everything because you have of to course, grab it, course. you have to yeah. grab it with your hand and then you put right. a string on it. There's like string a bunch of different... you have pulling. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the, I don't do that one. That, that's a little bit over my head. I mean, you know, Fender type of guitar, easy to, you know, like like this one. I had to put this this week. This is, um, you know, um, mm. radio radio shop uh, pick, pick pickups. You know, somebody, you know, uh, they made it for me. So I'm going to put this on my Stevie Ray Vaughan strap, ready oh, to wow. go. Yeah. So see, wow, this wow. is good I'm already wired, but I can make these too. You know, these these type of work I can do. Yeah. And, and how's your how's your soldering? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, because <laughs> amplifier I can fix too a little bit. Yeah. So I just soldering. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you cannot believe. See, already I have it here, right here. You know, ready to go. <laughs> you see? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, right. I, I've. I I never thought that I would be such a good soldier. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's like I um the guitar once you know it, it, it's such a rabbit hole because it's not just about the music like you're right. saying. It's also about the engineering of it and, and like <laughs> and like a guy like me who loves science and stuff like that. Like yes, the idea that the guitar you know the electric guitar. Uh -huh. um, People don't realize that the electric guitar actually has, you know, no no batteries. It has no electricity that actually right. goes into it, right? It's yes. like it's, it's a very interesting, very strange in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah because exactly. it's it's like you know, electricity. You know, um, it was you know discovered um, by uh, Maxwell to actually be one of two things it's electricity and magnetism working yeah. together right you know? So, i know it's very very interesting right yeah and the pickups are just magnets essentially with copper yeah. wire the pickups are essentially a battery you know it has oh. a magnet with like copper. See now you know you know a lot of stuff that's great yeah yeah right. you know and it's this magical like like the guitar is the most magical thing out yeah. there because if you're good at I'm playing so that's why, Mark, if you have a Stratocaster, try this one tonight. Okay. Yeah, single coil has a lot of mag magnet, you know. Um, yeah. Cool. So most of the problem students has is sometimes, even like they have a custom shop guitar, Fender, but front, you know, especially like a lower, lower, you know, um, lower string side, it's a little too high. Mm. Then what happened is, Magnet is pulling a string from vibration. Mm. So once you play, it's almost like, you know, you, you don't hear the sustain. Mm. So like the worst case is, I should do the video too, maybe. Play one note, um, oh, you know, almost decrease quickly. Just because magnet is pulling. But then once you, you lower magnet away from string, then all of a sudden sustain forever. And that's what you want? Is that what you're looking that's for? That's what I want, yeah. That's yeah. that's what I do usually in students because students' guitar, you know, my, um, pickup height is too close to the strings. Interesting. Then I can hear that. I can hear. 
is something. Can I can I play a little bit? Can I play? Oh. oh, okay. So but when you do, you have to play tenth fret. Uh, okay. Because tenth fret, then the D really note get a low low frequency. So then you hear first, then you lower the pickup change it you can hear like it completely different it's wow. just really a different experience but what you know what one other very difficult maybe like you know advanced level thing i think in music that some people have it as like a natural gift and for me i've really had to like get better at it is the okay. concept of, of ear training yeah i think like you know you said exactly great words natural gift right I believe there's no natural gift. Yeah, that's a big one. Because I don't have, I didn't have a natural gift. I didn't. Mm. That's hard but, for me to believe, to be honest. But this is right, very interesting. Right. Just, just because you only see good part. Right, right. But I told you, twelve to thirteen. When I was, you know, twelve to thirteen, I could not play any chords, nothing, but right. chromatic scale. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, how can you say I had a talent, right? Naturally, right? Because right. I had no idea, but I just kept doing it. Right, it's practice. That's the talent. Yeah, practice, right? But also, I kept doing listening, all mm. listening. So basically, listening is really educate, you know, yourself, myself, to be a musician. Mm. But then you learn instrument. Then you practice, two things connect. Mm. Sometimes people play music too quick because now there's internet, core, you can learn chords without listening or, you know, because visually you can play. So sometimes people don't listen music enough before right. they play music you know <laughs> right right so yeah. so so when 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 you do ear training or either for yourself or for your students yes what's what's kind of like the syllabus or like what are the core sure yes exactly exactly so so you know young especially young people nowadays listen music from youtube or spotify or itunes that means there is no picture of album or there is no distinction between album or a lot of songs okay that's, in, that's a very good point right so i i teach music students so i teach how to listen music like a musician mm. so first thing i tell them don't listen free you have to pay it mm, right. so <laughs> right. even so this is what i do even i have you know free music and uh, you know internet i pay right because that way first you you show the respect sure okay so then first <laughs> then the next thing right just idea yeah 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 so say like you like a blues okay so then what you want to do this okay you listen this one say stevie ray vaughn okay yeah. for example then you learn you know something like bb king okay you know live at the regal right whatever right, you know, right. Like that. and then maybe one more album maybe like you know something different but what happened is if you have a two three albums that's enough mm. as a musician because that's how we listen eric clapton i'm sure when they found out halloween wolf or was you know lightning hopkins or bb king they only had one album mm. in their house with the friends they did they, this that's, that's they listen not like they have 10 albums do you see Right, right, right. When, when when John Lennon was growing up, you know, he talked about that he would only listen to the Everly Brothers over and over and over exactly. again. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right. So that that obsession important to be good musician because you repeat, it, you know, on one album so many times. So when you see the album cover, you can hear the intro, almost like this. If you go to Desert Island. Then mm. if you look at the you know image of that picture, then you can hear entire album without a stopping. Wow. Because that's sort of a talent as a musician. Really remember what sounds like. You know? Yeah, because like I am um, 
One thing that's happened to me is, you know, I've gotten better, a lot better since the pandemic. The pandemic's mm -hmm. been a gift for me musically. You know, okay. I discovered yeah. I discovered you. I decided to take Thank my music you. more seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, I can improvise now. Like I can play to like BB King and like, yeah. oh, what key are you in? You know, and yes. like, you know, me and my friends do the same exercise that you do, where that you play a few chords and yeah. then somebody else solos, and then like yeah. you switch back and forth. Um, the um, God, I forgot my point because I was so yeah. you know I got so excited <laughs> about the yeah, fact because, that I actually because, learned. You, you, me, me and the friends always we talk about guitar. Always, it's you know go you know it, it's just going you know so so many directions, right? But yeah, anyway, yeah. point is how to listen music as a musician is yes. less music. Less. So music. what I do first thing, pick three albums. You listen to that three albums, ninety days, but you can't listen to anything else. Oh, this is this was my point. This was my yes. point. One thing that frustrates me about music yes. is that it has this ability to for you to forget it. Like, like there's <laughs> something about knowing a song. Like, yeah, I I learned this entire uh, um, Radiohead song that's very complicated, yeah. and okay. I knew how to play the whole thing. It had like four different parts. Yeah, and I knew how to play everything, and now I forgot it. Yeah, you know, and like I was okay. playing it every day. Like I, I you... give you idea. I give you yeah. because because you memorized it, right? Somehow, right, right. So if you break next time, right, you break it down each section, and a little slower, okay, a little slower each section. Think about how long each chord lasts. What type of quality of chords? What degree you hear? Minor third or whatever. Right, and then think about that same thing. Can I play in a different key? Right, right. And if you try to do, you have no idea. That means you need to know that music a little deeper. Right, right, right. So, so sometimes I'm, I mean, happened to me too. Sometimes, like a difficult song, I remember, you know, almost a train of thought. You, you can, you know, think about it. But then once, once you don't, you, you forget something, you can go back because. You just memorize whole thing from top to bottom, right, right? So you can just go, okay, B section. Here we go. W which B section? Because you have to play whole A section to go to B section. Right, right. It's like it's like the difference between knowing somebody's name that you want to call versus remembering the phone number, right? Like, right, right, right. You know, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that, that that's an interesting concept. I, you know, one song that I always kind of play. Okay. Um, is uh, House of the Rising Sun. You know, it's a very yeah, popular, yeah, you know, yeah, very yeah. popular song. Right. But, um, and and that's one of the few songs that I've never been able to forget. You know, like I yeah. always remember that, the A minor and the F and the, you know, it's like, right. you know, it's in stuck in my brain. Right. But to your point, I'm going to try later, see if I can play it in a different key. Even like, you know, like, you know, something, Mark, like, you know, think about like, you know, like if you go, Right. So even that, right, that I play backwards, like, you know, kind of shift. Like that. Right. Well, I always think Stay Away to Heaven is kind of a based on that song sometime right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because this one is E, really. E triads, almost. Yeah. Then... This one, I always thought this is part of A minor. That's really C. Right, right. So like, this is D, and different in bass. So that. Same thing. Right, right. I mean, you know what I mean? But because Stay Away to Heaven becomes so pop popular and so amazing because arrangement. But still, right. to me, that even that song has an original. Right, right. That's very interesting. First of all, I, I, I had never heard anybody connect those two songs together. I've heard people connect "House of the Rising Sun" with uh, "While While, While My Guitar Gently Weeps." Uh, I see. I see. Because the minor song, you know, right. then, this is really E sound. Then 
that's took me a long time to read. Oh, that's a C. C. So. So, so to me, um, like you know, it's good, good exercise to do. Like you know, um, stay away to heaven. If you play composition, mm. beautiful composition, but it then really you is. start to think, what, what is this meaning? A minor to E. Next one, all chromatic going down, but really C. But not, not, not so many people think of a C. Next right. one is D. No, so many, because everything's so smooth. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah. It's funny because like with, with your, um, like for me, the, uh, the triads, yeah. I try to play house of the rising sun only in triads, oh, up that's and good, down, yeah. you know, to try to keep like, you know, so, so, so I can remember all, right. the, you know, all the basic shapes and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. So like, even like, you know, Mark, that's a good idea. If you play, you know, like, So, like that. So, like, yeah. wow, yeah. So, That's awesome. Cool, right? Yeah, that's awesome because I don't quite do it like that. I kind of strum the triad, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like... no, no. That's that's totally great. But then what happens is gradually the new lesson I did, top three strings thing. If you learn that, basically, if you learn that, you learn more than cage to form, right? Because you have a freedom. You see, cage to form is a problem. Is you use cage system to memorize the position. That's a problem. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's why at the Berkeley, I will say always, K I explain about cage system. If you learn cage system, you cage the in. Right. That's my job. <laughs> cage the in. That's right, what you want, right. you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. So, yeah. so, so, so your recommendation is to really get the triads from the yeah, bottom. Yeah, triads to, the top. to really practice somehow. So, in other words, some people say, oh, yeah, just learn cage system. But see, Anything easy, see, especially I tell my students, anything easy, you kind of want to avoid it. You do hard work. You yeah. have to do hard work to get the easy work. Because if you do hard work, everything becomes easy. Yeah, you know, that that's the bottom line. And I think that that's the lesson um, that I'm really taking away from, you know, this honor that I've had to speak with you uh, tonight. Thank you. Which is that. Natural ability shouldn't be an excuse because it has nothing to do with no, that. See, so, so that's why, like, you know, always the people say, how was John Mayer when he studied with you? Right. You know, two things that people want to know. He wasn't great. Really? So he, because he, wanna, he wasn't great, so I'm, I'm okay. I'm not great. Or, <laughs> you know, you want to hear, he was so amazing. That's why I don't have to be great because he was just an amazing person already. You know, something right, like right. That. I have to tell you, Everybody same to me. Right. I mean, John was great. Still, he has, you know, problems. So we have to work a lot. Mm. I mean, every Tuesday morning, I really made him to study something he didn't want to study. Sure. I didn't really entertain him. I just really forced him to study this, that, that, you know. So that's why when he gave me the guitar, he always said, this is nothing. I learned so much from you. Yeah, I mean that's an amazing thing to hear from him. Of Every course. time he sent me that guitar, I want to have this one because I just I'm so thankful. You and, know, and, yeah. and like, look, man, we're 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 almost at an hour. I don't want to okay, take yeah. too yeah. much of your time, but I want <laughs> no, to. No. But but there is one thing that I want to ask you about, yeah. um, because it's been on my mind uh, when I knew I was going to get a chance to chat with you, and it's okay. overall, how do you feel that the state of music education is like in this country or, you know, maybe even the world. Is it, is it in a good place? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Like what can we do to like, cause it seems people are so into sequencers and keyboards yeah. and, and like learning music instruments. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't feel like there's as much 
interest or have you not seen any decline in the volume of students? Here's the thing. I don't really know every you know, situation in every state. Because mm-hmm. every state has a little bit like, you know, or, 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 you know, like good area and kind of bad area. That's what I learned from America. America is almost like this. It's not really <laughs> even. Some right. places, right. You know, so, you know, I mean, I mean, so really hard to say. But then I can see a lot of people really try to work people like, you know, set, uh, give them ukulele to, you know, schools and stuff. So I don't know. But one thing I say. You know, teach music, learn music. You don't you don't have to have a, too much equipment. Mm. In other words, you don't need a sequencer. You don't have the loop system. You don't have the recording. You have to really teach people, make instrument, sing. Mm. You know, then really uh, encourage people more. I mean, teacher has to encourage students more, not just... You know, make them hard work. Well, we do that, but just you know, encouragement is more important to me. Yeah. So first, so to me, learn music, and I wish everybody become better person, kind yeah. person. So kindness, give back to other people. So then this world become much more safer. Yeah. Much more sweeter. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And you also do private lessons, right? Like people can go to guitarwisdom.com. Is it? Yeah. So that here's the thing. Guitar, guitar, you know, um, guitar wisdom is not the private lesson, but this is more like, you know, online subscription video lessons. Uh huh. The reason is like, like, you know, I don't teach that many students outside of Berkeley because I teach Berkeley, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, full, always full. Yeah, and then I have to practice. I have to create my music. So now I dedicate more of my time creating my own time, but also dedicate making more better education on my guitar wisdom website. And that's only nine ninety nine. On, only ten dollars a uh, month to watch wow. all my videos. You know, over three hundred videos there. And, the and reason, is- I did, I, yeah, the reason I did this is because if somebody want to study with me, I'm not cheap. Right, right, right. So that's not fair to everybody. That's why I made it a site. And uh, is there on the site, is there a chance to submit uh, music to you so that you can give feedback on, on lessons? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot do it because right because a thousand of people there. Right, 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 so if right. If I do that, I have to do 20 hours listening, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, so, right, right. It's but, too much for one person. Right, but I have a lot of example. Mm-hmm. But example, everything's there. So I mean, it's really simple f- format that people really learn with only ten dollars a month. You know? Yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll put all the links down below. Tomo, Thank you. this has been such an honor. I hope to keep in touch with you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Please do. Yeah. You know, like I feel like we're related because your philosophy of music education has trickled down to me. And like, I, you know, not only do I wake up and do 10 minutes of the chromatic scale from the first (laughs) fret to the 12th fret up and down. The reason that chromatic scale is great because it's not entertaining, but you become very patient person. Just do dexterous. It's very dexterous. Yeah. 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 Then that patient become nicer person because you don't get frustrated. And like one of the things that I learned from you that like me and my bandmates always talk about is that you have to practice with no distortion. You know, you got to try to get as clean, <laughs> as clean. Yeah, as clean tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean tone, yes. Yeah, yes, as clean as a tone as possible. Right. Uh, that's I changed know. probably a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, look, thank, thank you. you so much, Tomo. Um, thank you, he's, Tomo Bye. Fujita. I'll put all the links down below. Go check okay. out his channel. He is a true master educator. And thank (laughs) Thank you you very much for uh, being part of the show. Thank you. Thanks so much.